Nikola Tesla, living under the shadow of Thomas Edison. Tesla is less alone, but his theories have given him a special place in the field. Here we try to showcase some interesting facts that have come to light about Tesla. He was an electric engineer and a physicist of repute. He had over 300 patents credited to him but he became famous for developing the alternate current technology, which has a wide variety of uses. He was known for his steric sense of humor. The museum in Wardenclyffe was funded by a cartoon showing the respect people had for his humor. Tesla, in the initial years, worked for Thomas Edison designing direct current generators. He moved away to pursue his own research. Though people described him as rivals, the fact of the matter is that they were two sides of a coin. Tesla was at heart an environmentalist and was concerned about the way people were using the resources. He looked for ways to make renewable resources. In fact, he created artificial lightning in his lab and found differences in electric potential on Earth and high objects. As early as 1901, he had ideas about smartphone technology. He was a brilliant thinker but could not put his thoughts and ideas into practice. Tesla never bothered about monetary gains for his research and many a time did not have funds to work on his ideas. People term him a brilliant thinker and humanist. It is said that he had an earthquake mission in his lab and on many occasions, he would frighten the entire neighborhood when he used it. It is said that Mark Twain was one of the victims of this exercise. Nikola Tesla, living under the shadow of Thomas Edison. Tesla is less alone, but his theories have given him a special place in the field. Here we try to showcase some interesting facts that have come to light about Tesla. He was an electric engineer and a physicist of repute. He had over 300 patents credited to him but he became famous for developing the alternate current technology, which has a wide variety of uses. He was known for his steric sense of humor. The museum in Wardenclyffe was funded by a cartoon showing the respect people had for his humor. Tesla, in the initial years, worked for Thomas Edison designing direct current generators. He moved away to pursue his own research. Though people described him as rivals, the fact of the matter is that they were two sides of a coin. Tesla was at heart an environmentalist and was concerned about the way people were using the resources. He looked for ways to make renewable resources. In fact, he created artificial lightning in his lab and found differences in electric potential on Earth and high objects. As early as 1901, he had ideas about smartphone technology. He was a brilliant thinker but could not put his thoughts and ideas into practice. Tesla never bothered about monetary gains for his research and many a time did not have funds to work on his ideas. People term him a brilliant thinker and humanist. It is said that he had an earthquake mission in his lab and on many occasions, he would frighten the entire neighborhood when he used it. It is said that Mark Twain was one of the victims of this exercise. If you like the colorful animals we just saw, you're going to love these next animals, frogs. You might not normally think of frogs as being colorful, but these frogs definitely are. They are the dart poison frogs of Central and South America. Look at their striking colors, often yellow with black stripes or deep blue with black spots. Beyond being nice to look at, these markings have a purpose. They warn predators that these frogs are poisonous. When threatened, these frogs secrete a substance through their skin that would easily kill whatever animal might try to eat them. Their bright colors communicate this, and so most animals tend not to hunt them. Now, speaking of hunting, for centuries these frogs were sought after by hunters. As you might think, the hunters didn't want to eat the frogs, but rather they captured them for their poison. They would add the poison to the tips of their hunting arrows. 
Of course, nowadays, most hunters use guns. These days, dart poison frogs are of less interest to hunters than to medical researchers. Researchers believe that they can make new heart medicine from the poison because it acts as a stimulant on the body's nervous system. Researchers think they could use it to stimulate a weak heart. There is, however, a problem with doing research on these frogs. Those that are caught in the wild will produce their poison until they die. However, those that are born in captivity, like the ones you see here, will not produce any poison at all. If you like the colorful animals we just saw, you're going to love these next animals, frogs. You might not normally think of frogs as being colorful, but these frogs definitely are. They are the dart poison frogs of Central and South America. Look at their striking colors, often yellow with black stripes or deep blue with black spots. Beyond being nice to look at, these markings have a purpose. They warn predators that these frogs are poisonous. When threatened, these frogs secrete a substance through their skin that would easily kill whatever animal might try to eat them. Their bright colors communicate this, and so most animals tend not to hunt them. Now, speaking of hunting, for centuries these frogs were sought after by hunters. As you might think, the hunters didn't want to eat the frogs, but rather they captured them for their poison. They would add the poison to the tips of their hunting arrows. Of course, nowadays most hunters use guns. These days, dart poison frogs are of less interest to hunters than to medical researchers. Researchers believe that they can make new heart medicine from the poison because it acts as a stimulant on the body's nervous system. Researchers think they could use it to stimulate a weak heart. There is, however, a problem with doing research on these frogs. Those that are caught in the wild will produce their poison until they die. However, those that are born in captivity, like the ones you see here, will not produce any poison at all. A leader can define or clarify goals by issuing a memo or an executive order, an edict or a fatwa or a tweet, bypassing a law, barking a command, or presenting an interesting idea in a meeting of colleagues. Leaders can mobilize people's energies in ways that range from subtle quiet persuasion to the coercive threat or the use of deadly force. Sometimes a charismatic leader, such as Martin Luther King Jr., can define goals and mobilize energies through rhetoric and the power of example. We can think of leadership as a spectrum, in terms of both visibility and the power the leader wields. On one end of the spectrum, we have the most visible. Authoritative leaders like the President of the United States or the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, or a dictator such as Hitler or Gaddafi. At the opposite end of the spectrum is casual, low-key leadership found in countless situations every day around the world. Leadership that can make a significant difference to the individuals whose lives are touched by it. Over the centuries, the first kind, the out-in-front, authoritative leadership, has generally been exhibited by men. Some men in positions of great authority, including Nelson Mandela, have chosen a strategy of leading from behind. More often, however, top leaders have been quite visible in their exercise of power. Women, as well as some men, have provided casual, low-key leadership behind the scenes. But this pattern has been changing, as more women have taken up opportunities for visible, authoritative leadership.
A leader can define or clarify goals by issuing a memo or an executive order, an edict or a fatwa or a tweet. Bypassing a law, barking a command, or presenting an interesting idea in a meeting of colleagues. Leaders can mobilize people's energies in ways that range from subtle quiet persuasion to the coercive threat or the use of deadly force. Sometimes a charismatic leader, such as Martin Luther King Jr., can define goals and mobilize energies through rhetoric and the power of example. We can think of leadership as a spectrum, in terms of both visibility and the power the leader wields. On one end of the spectrum, we have the most visible. Authoritative leaders like the President of the United States or the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, or a dictator such as Hitler or Gaddafi. At the opposite end of the spectrum is casual, low-key leadership found in countless situations every day around the world. Leadership that can make a significant difference to the individuals whose lives are touched by it. Over the centuries, the first kind, the out-in-front, authoritative leadership, has generally been exhibited by men. Some men in positions of great authority, including Nelson Mandela, have chosen a strategy of leading from behind. More often, however, top leaders have been quite visible in their exercise of power. Women, as well as some men, have provided casual, low-key leadership behind the scenes. But this pattern has been changing, as more women have taken up opportunities for visible, authoritative leadership. So the pace at which human minds have evolved over the last half million years and more recently the last 200,000 years has been so frighteningly rapid that the evolution of cognitive function and perception can only occur in a small number of genes. If one needed to adapt dozens of genes changes in concert in order to acquire the penetrating minds that we now have, which our ancestors 5,000 years ago didn't have, the evolution could not have taken place, it could not have occurred so quickly. And for that reason alone, one begins to really suspect that the genetic differences between people who lived 5,000 years ago is evidence that the difference between the cognitive functions and ours is not actually as large. Therefore, a rather small number of genes may be responsible for the powerful minds that humans have which most of us now possess. So the pace at which human minds have evolved over the last half million years and more recently the last 200,000 years has been so frighteningly rapid that the evolution of cognitive function and perception can only occur in a small number of genes. If one needed to adapt dozens of genes changes in concert in order to acquire the penetrating minds that we now have, which our ancestors 5,000 years ago didn't have, the evolution could not have taken place, it could not have occurred so quickly. And for that reason alone, one begins to really suspect that the genetic differences between people who lived 5,000 years ago is evidence that the difference between the cognitive functions and ours is not actually as large. Therefore, a rather small number of genes may be responsible for the powerful minds that humans have which most of us now possess. Most Americans take energy for granted. But, for many families, maintaining access to reliable and affordable energy is a persistent challenge and a significant material hardship. This is a problem referred to as energy insecurity, and it affects millions of American households each year. We have found that energy insecurity is a growing and vexing problem among low-income households, and the COVID-19 pandemic has made this problem worse. Our analysis finds that there are disparities in rates of energy insecurity across various socio-demographic groups. Black and Hispanic households, for example, are significantly more likely to experience energy insecurity and face utility disconnection than white households. So too are households with young children, individuals that require electronic medical devices, and those in dwellings with inefficient or poor conditions. 
Households that cannot pay for energy are unable to power electronic learning or medical devices, keep perishable, healthy food in the refrigerator, or maintain safe body temperatures. Under conditions of extreme heat or cold, people can suffer from mental and physical health consequences, including the possibility of death. Strategies for coping with uncomfortable temperatures, such as burning trash or sitting in one's car with the heat running, can lead to tragic outcomes as well. Our research underscores the importance of public policy that targets energy insecurity and its underlying causes. Weatherization assistance, incentives for residential solar power, energy bill assistance, and utility disconnection protections are all viable strategies for helping the millions of households across the country that are currently unable to pay their energy bills. Most Americans take energy for granted. But, for many families, maintaining access to reliable and affordable energy is a persistent challenge and a significant material hardship. This is a problem referred to as energy insecurity, and it affects millions of American households each year. We have found that energy insecurity is a growing and vexing problem among low-income households, and the COVID-19 pandemic has made this problem worse. Our analysis finds that there are disparities in rates of energy insecurity across various socio-demographic groups. Black and Hispanic households, for example, are significantly more likely to experience energy insecurity and face utility disconnection than white households. So too are households with young children, individuals that require electronic medical devices, and those in dwellings with inefficient or poor conditions. Households that cannot pay for energy are unable to power electronic learning or medical devices, keep perishable, healthy food in the refrigerator, or maintain safe body temperatures. Under conditions of extreme heat or cold, people can suffer from mental and physical health consequences, including the possibility of death. Strategies for coping with uncomfortable temperatures, such as burning trash or sitting in one's car with the heat running, can lead to tragic outcomes as well. Our research underscores the importance of public policy that targets energy insecurity and its underlying causes. Weatherization assistance, incentives for residential solar power, energy bill assistance, and utility disconnection protections are all viable strategies for helping the millions of households across the country that are currently unable to pay their energy bills. There comes a time in a desert ant's life when a piece of food is too large to ignore, but too heavy to lift, and the only way to get it home is to adopt a new style of walking. The long-legged and speedy Cataglyphus fortis normally covers ground with a three-legged stride that moves two legs forwards on one side, and one on the other. For the next step, the insect mirrors the move with its other three legs. But recordings of ants in the Tunisian desert reveal that when faced with oversized lumps of food ten times their own weight, the forward, tripod, walking style is abandoned. Unable to lift the morsels in their mandibles, the ants drag the food backwards instead, moving all six legs independently. This is the first time we have seen this in any ants, said lead author Sarah Pfeffer at the University of Ulm in Germany. The ants' long legs already help keep their bodies away from the scorching desert floor and enable them to speed around at up to 60 centimeters per second. Think of Usain Bolt, who has very long legs compared to body size. The desert floor is also very hot, so the further away their bodies are from the surface, the better, said co-author Matthias Wittelinger. The ants have also evolved to function at body temperatures of 50 C in a desert where temperatures can soar to 70 C. They're basically just trying to get out of the heat, he added.
There comes a time in a desert ant's life when a piece of food is too large to ignore, but too heavy to lift, and the only way to get it home is to adopt a new style of walking. The long-legged and speedy Cataglyphus fortis normally covers ground with a three-legged stride that moves two legs forwards on one side, and one on the other. For the next step, the insect mirrors the move with its other three legs. But recordings of ants in the Tunisian desert reveal that when faced with oversized lumps of food ten times their own weight, the forward, tripod, walking style is abandoned. Unable to lift the morsels in their mandibles, the ants drag the food backwards instead, moving all six legs independently. This is the first time we have seen this in any ants, said lead author Sarah Pfeffer at the University of Ulm in Germany. The ant's long legs already help keep their bodies away from the scorching desert floor and enable them to speed around at up to 60 centimeters per second. Think of Usain Bolt, who has very long legs compared to body size. The desert floor is also very hot, so the further away their bodies are from the surface, the better, said co-author Matthias Wittelinger. The ants have also evolved to function at body temperatures of 50 C in a desert where temperatures can soar to 70 C. They're basically just trying to get out of the heat, he added. Why do the bumblebees pick some flowers over others? Researchers have known for a while that a flower's color can be a signal. Color in shorthand that says to a bee, hey, I get some good quality nectar here, want to stop by for a visit. But new findings show that bees also use color to get clues about a flower's temperature. And according to a study from a British research team published in the journal Nature, some like it hot. Bees use up a lot of energy just stay warm on some days. In fact, they can't even fly if they are too cold. So if one flower is warmer than another, a bee can save some of its fuel by basking on that flower while it's doing its pollinating business. And it turns out that bumblebees consistently do choose warmer flowers over cooler ones, even when the two flowers offer up the same quantity and quality of nectar. Some plants seem to be evolutionarily adapted to be slightly warmer because the warmer ones get visited more by the chili bees. When it comes to getting pollinated, apparently the heat is on, and that is the buzz. Why do the bumblebees pick some flowers over others? Researchers have known for a while that a flower's color can be a signal. Color in shorthand that says to a bee, hey, I get some good quality nectar here, want to stop by for a visit. But new findings show that bees also use color to get clues about a flower's temperature. And according to a study from a British research team published in the journal Nature, some like it hot. Bees use up a lot of energy just stay warm on some days. In fact, they can't even fly if they are too cold. So if one flower is warmer than another, a bee can save some of its fuel by basking on that flower while it's doing its pollinating business. And it turns out that bumblebees consistently do choose warmer flowers over cooler ones, even when the two flowers offer up the same quantity and quality of nectar. Some plants seem to be evolutionarily adapted to be slightly warmer because the warmer ones get visited more by the chili bees. When it comes to getting pollinated, apparently the heat is on, and that is the buzz. Frogs are a diverse and largely carnivorous group of short-bodied, tailless amphibians composing the order Anura. The oldest fossil proto-frog appeared in the early Triassic of Madagascar, but molecular clock dating suggests their origins may extend further back to the Permian, 265 million years ago. Frogs are widely distributed, ranging from the tropics to subarctic regions, but the greatest concentration of species diversity is found in tropical rainforests. There are approximately 4,800 recorded species, accounting for over 85% of extant amphibian species. They are also one of the five most diverse vertebrate orders. Besides living in fresh water and on dry land, the adults of some species are adapted for living underground or in trees. Adult frogs generally have a carnivorous diet consisting of small invertebrates, but omnivorous species exist and a few feed on fruit. Frogs are extremely efficient at converting what they eat into body mass. 
They are an important food source for predators and part of the food web dynamics of many of the world's ecosystems. The skin is semi-permeable, making them susceptible to dehydration, so they either live in moist places or have special adaptations to deal with dry habitats. Frogs produce a wide range of vocalizations, particularly in their breeding season, and exhibit many different kinds of complex behaviors to attract mates, to fend off predators, and to generally survive. Frog populations have declined significantly since the 1950s. More than one-third of species are considered to be threatened with extinction and over 120 are believed to have become extinct since the 1980s. The number of malformations among frogs is on the rise and an emerging fungal disease, Chytridia mycosis, has spread around the world. Conservation biologists are working to understand the causes of these problems and to resolve them. Frogs are valued as food by humans and also have many cultural roles in literature, symbolism and religion. Frogs are a diverse and largely carnivorous group of short-bodied, tailless amphibians composing the order Anura. The oldest fossil proto-frog appeared in the early Triassic of Madagascar, but molecular clock dating suggests their origins may extend further back to the Permian, 265 million years ago. Frogs are widely distributed, ranging from the tropics to subarctic regions, but the greatest concentration of species diversity is found in tropical rainforests. There are approximately 4,800 recorded species, accounting for over 85% of extant amphibian species. They are also one of the five most diverse vertebrate orders. Besides living in fresh water and on dry land, the adults of some species are adapted for living underground or in trees. Adult frogs generally have a carnivorous diet consisting of small invertebrates, but omnivorous species exist and a few feed on fruit. Frogs are extremely efficient at converting what they eat into body mass. They are an important food source for predators and part of the food web dynamics of many of the world's ecosystems. The skin is semi-permeable, making them susceptible to dehydration, so they either live in moist places or have special adaptations to deal with dry habitats. Frogs produce a wide range of vocalizations, particularly in their breeding season, and exhibit many different kinds of complex behaviors to attract mates, to fend off predators, and to generally survive. Frog populations have declined significantly since the 1950s. More than one-third of species are considered to be threatened with extinction and over 120 are believed to have become extinct since the 1980s. The number of malformations among frogs is on the rise and an emerging fungal disease, Chytridia mycosis, has spread around the world. Conservation biologists are working to understand the causes of these problems and to resolve them. Frogs are valued as food by humans and also have many cultural roles in literature, symbolism and religion. <laughs> 